How's it going gang, it's a final render here and welcome to another exciting Fallout 76 news video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the new additions coming to the future of Fallout 76 that many of you can actually start playing right now. And we're also going to talk about some of the stuff that was announced in yesterday's Inside the Vault article. So starting with that, we have learned that there is going to be a hotfix added to the game next week, which should hopefully restore the vendor machines back into action. It's about time the vendor machines would have been off for three weeks at that stage whilst Bethesda were addressing a duping exploit. But now, after three long weeks, we should hopefully have the vendor machines back open, which is good because there are definitely lots of cap sinks in the game and I would definitely like to be able to have my vendor machine back online and also just so I can go and buy some more stuff from you other players. It's definitely a big part of the game and I'm very happy it is back. Hopefully there is nothing wrong with it this time and there aren't ways to duplicate items using them because it's been a long time and I'm fed up of vending machines being turned off all the time because of silly people trying to cheat. But also we learned about a fantastic new double XP event coming very soon into Fallout 76. It's always a good thing to have double XP events. They definitely encourage people to take part in some of the bigger events. And also, the double XP event does take place during the Nuclear Winter Challenges. So therefore, if you're a little bit behind on unlocking some of those really cool Nuclear Winter skins, maybe you can jump on Nuclear Winter during that time period, and then you can unlock some of the final ones with double XP. That'll definitely be a great thing. But the really juicy news that we got from yesterday's Inside the Vault article was that the private test server is now a public test server. Now anybody who owns Fallout 76 on Bethesda.net on PC, as in not Steam users, only Bethesda.net, can now access some of the new features that are yet to be added to Fallout 76 to bug test them, try them out and give their feedback on the forums. Now the private test server actually was, did release quite a long time ago. We were able to privately test all of Wastelanders on that. I myself was a member of that. But now, as a public test server, everyone who owns the game on Bethesda.net can try some of the new updates, at least for now. They may convert it into a private test server later on when some of the story content comes out. But as of right now, if you're on Bethesda.net on PC, you can try out the new event, A Colossal Problem, the new legendary perk card system, and the new team finder system that are going to be added to the game very, very soon. It does not include the seasons update, which should be coming on update 20, which actually comes out in a month's time. But we've got some really interesting things to talk about. And more importantly, this stuff in the public test server is not, I repeat, not under an NDA. Which in other words means I am allowed to tell you guys about it. However, Bethesda have asked very, very nicely that if I talk about anything in this public test server, I must give spoiler warnings. So here is your final warning, people. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. If you do not want to know what's coming out onto Fallout 76 in the next few weeks, please leave now. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Okay, that should be good. So the first thing I want to talk about that is in the public test server is a brand new event called a Colossal Problem. And that new event is really, really cool because it is based around fighting a Wendigo Colossus. The Wendigo Colossus were introduced into the game during Wastelanders. However, I myself have still never seen one. A player who plays the game a lot has still never seen one. They are extremely rare. However, now there is an event to where you can fight a Wendigo Colossus. And something very cool about this event is that it serves as a very cool alternative to Scorched Earth, the Scorched Beast Queen event. But how does this event start and how does it work? Well, this event starts by you will actually find a new NPC inside Foundation. And this new NPC will go and tell you to go and search out Mononga Mine for her father. However, the actual mine is sealed shut. It has been collapsed for a while. And the only way to reveal the mine and clear the rubble is to nuke it. So therefore, what you need to do is go and launch a nuke at Mononga Mine. And then it will start the event. And inside, we learn that it is full of Wendigo and also a Wendigo Colossus, which we have to kill. And something really cool about this event is that it is very similar to Scorched Earth in the sense that you need to launch a nuke and you need to do it with high level players. This is classed as a very hard event so you do get an awful lot of gold bullion for doing it. However, this beast is tough and it spawns an unlimited army of level 75 Wendigo. It's genuinely a very tough battle and it is timed but it is extremely cool. And as I said, the best thing about this one 
is that it is very similar to Scorched Earth. However, you can complete it a bit quicker. And because all of the monsters are typically higher level than you get in Scorched Earth, it's also probably more XP in the grand scheme of things, which I think is a very cool event. And also, it grants pretty much the exact same rewards as Scorched Earth, including Ultracite plans. I believe the only thing it doesn't give you are the improved repair kits. However, you do still get Ultracite, you do still get Stable Flux, you do still get Legendary Effects and the chance to get Ultracite plans. So... I think it's a really good event. It's a quicker Scorched Earth that I think grants more XP and honestly is just a very nice change. Not only that, but seeing as it's a Wendigo Colossus, you can always be fighting the Wendigo Colossus. Whereas many people who are melee builds just kind of sit around Scorched Earth and wait for the Queen to land. But now since this is a ground event, everyone is fighting at the same time and it is a very cool, very intense battle. And I can't wait to play more of a Colossal Problem. Next up, we can finally take a look at the legendary perk system that has been teased about coming to the game for a very long time. The legendary perk system is something which I've been looking forward to more than anything else which is going to be added in the first wave of content to Fallout 76 after Wastelanders. However, unfortunately, I'm actually personally not too happy with some of this system. I think it could use some improvement, but overall, that is why it is on the public test server. And also Bethesda have stated that if you're on the public test server, please share everything with them on their forums. And I will be doing that personally as well. I won't just be uploading my feedback in this video. But the legendary perk system is something which I've been looking forward to for a long time. But I am not too happy with it thus far. The main issue which I have with the legendary perk system is that the legendary perks themselves aren't very useful in my honest opinion. How the legendary system works is that every 50 levels, I believe it is, you can unlock a slot, an account-wide slot, for a new legendary perk card. And that legendary perk card you can purchase using coins that you get by scrapping older duplicate perk cards. So it's really nice, actually. It's a way to get rid of all those useless perk cards that you've got sitting on your character and invest them into a new card of your choosing, which I think is very cool and also something quite interesting is that different cards have different values. If you go and scrap a regular perk card, I believe it gives you one coin, which you can use to then get a new perk. And if you scrap a shiny card, it gives you five. However, each of those things are multiplied, depends on how many stars each card has. So if you scrap a level three card, you will get three coins. But seeing as shinies are worth 5, if you scrap a level 5 shiny card, you'll get 25 cut coins, which I think is very, very cool. It definitely gives you a good incentive to make sure you are managing your cards and scrap them at the appropriate time. And also, whenever you go and get these new legendary perk cards, as I said, they will cost coins. However, each rank of this card will actually increase incrementally with the amount of coins requiring to buy the next one. So it does give you something to grind for. It definitely gives you something to aim for. However, one thing I must stress that I'm not happy about with this system is that the majority of the cards are stuff that I just simply don't think are useful. I thought there would be lots more damage cards and stuff like that, but for the most part, they seem to be mostly around endurance or luck kind of style cards, and they're good, they're fun, they're wacky. However, I personally wouldn't use most of them. However, some of them, the ones which are good, are extremely good. For example, there is one to where every time I get hit with a ranged attack, it will actually increase the amount of damage my team is doing to the enemy that hurt me. So therefore, if I'm like a bit of a tank and I get shot a lot, all the enemies that are shooting me will take more damage from my team, which honestly is a very cool card. But then again, there are some others which aren't very exciting, such as if you punch an enemy, there is a chance that there will be a small explosion as well. Not very exciting. But overall, there is plenty of time, I think, to hopefully introduce new perk cards, which will be a bit more interesting. But for the most part, I do like the way you get the cards. I just think there needs to be more of them, if that makes sense. But a good way to describe it, I think, would be is that these aren't so much legendary perk cards that give you huge damage buffs, but they are more just bonus cards. And the third and final thing, which I think is actually the coolest thing to be added to Fallout 76 for a very long time, is the new team finder mechanic. Now this team finder mechanic is extremely simple to use and I think it's going to dramatically change the way you play Fallout 76 from now on. How the team finder works is that at any time throughout the game you can start an open 
public team and people can join your team without asking for you. You've already made a public team and welcomed people to join. However, you actually have to pick from a variety of team names, all of which give different buffs the longer you're in a team. One of these teams, for example, is that you set up a public events team to where the goal is to do public events. And every time you do a public event, you can get an increase of XP all the way up to double XP, which doesn't actually take too long of being in a team. So the more you're in a team, the more rewards you get all the way up to double XP, which is very, very cool. And there are other ones as well, which are ones for just kind of messing around. So the longer you play, the more luck special points you have. So just running around doing whatever you want, you'll slowly be increasing luck if you have everybody in your public team, or even a special building and crafting team, to where the longer you are in a team together, you actually get more intelligence points. Because when you craft weapons and armor, etc., the more intelligence you have, the higher the duration bar. So overall, it's a very cool system. It's really simple and easy to do, and it really works. You don't have to talk to people in the team. You don't have to do the events with them. But it is very quick and easy to start a team, very quick and easy to join one. You can change events whenever you want to, so you don't have to always do that one in that team. You can then swap it to a different type of team in order to kind of artificially get the best amount of bonuses as possible. And honestly, I think it's such a simple change, but has dramatic changes to the game in an extremely positive way. So thank you very much for watching this very quick news video, people. I think it has been very cool that we've now got this public test server, but as I've already mentioned, Bethesda have requested that if you talk about anything in the private test server, please make sure you warn people about spoilers and also report any issues down to them in their own personal forums because that's where they are most likely to see it. So therefore, I will be posting this video in their forums. I'll also be actively posting any bugs I find to their forums. But thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know what kind of things you are looking forward to that is coming to the game in the future. I can't wait to see all you've written. Remember to check out all the cool Patreon people in the description below who help support the channel with their financial donations. You of course can also do the same. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye gang. Bye bye.